Hello, sewing friends. Have you ever wondered about digitizing, what the word even means? Or have you wondered how to get yourself started with using embroidery software so that you can do more with your embroidery designs and more with your machine? Welcome to the Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco live show where sewing enthusiasts gather to be inspired and learn to make the most of their machines. Tonight, I can't wait to share my special guest with you. Um, it took a little doing, just a little doing to get him to come. So <laughs> um, it makes it makes it extra, extra special. I have got an expert digitizer here tonight and just an all around great guy. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Okay, Roy is actually his title is Chief Technology Officer, CTO for short, for software and hardware at Designs in Machine Embroidery. I know we've got a lot of Designs in Machine Embroidery friends here tonight. And if you are um, a fan of Designs in Machine Embroidery, please let me know in the chat because I'd love to hear it. If it's um, new to you, um, that company, you'll learn more a little bit more about what they offer to machine embroidery enthusiasts tonight. But Roy is actually a trained artist with multiple degrees, including commercial art, fine art, TV production, electrical engineering. And I also saw that Ray has achieved a first degree black belt. Indeed, he is a man of many talents. Let's all welcome Roy Garland. Roy, I am so glad you are here tonight. Welcome. Say hi, everybody. Hi, hi guys. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a good evening and you're safe out there. Yeah, you are going to learn a lot tonight um, about what it is behind the scenes for uh, digitizing, for sure. So, Roy, um, you know, you and I met uh, not not too long ago, as far as like having a, a face to face virtual account encounter. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but um, you may have seen some of you may have seen Roy on the uh, Designs in Machine Embroidery show that Eileen Roach holds. She has a show on YouTube and Facebook on the uh, on Thursday every week at one p.m. 1 p.m. Central, Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. I always just, you know, we're always we're always just looking for our own our own time zone. So you may have seen Roy talk on that particular show where there was a what I call the dancing dummy, <laughs> the dancing digitized <laughs> dummy. So is there anybody here tonight who has seen that show? Let me take a peek here and see. I'll give you a few seconds to, to think about it. That was a, a great show, um, Roy, where you really showed a, a lot of the details of what goes into a design. I know in that particular show, Eileen featured the flesh tone threads. Correct. And you did a lot of talk about, about shading and all that kind of thing. Yes. And when I watched the show... I got really, um, really excited about the opportunity of having you come on and do uh, and do this show with me. So <laughs> well, hopefully you. I'll do well. <laughs> You'll do great. Thank you very, very much for being here. I want to just take a peek at the um, comments here for a minute and say hi to a few people. We've got some of my um Always friends here. Uh, I see Janice is here. Connie's here. Jane. June is here from Ohio. Hey, June. Good to have you here. Star Raymond is here. Josie Sows. Clovis is here. Hey, Clovis. Uh, Cindy King. Did I say Cindy? Cindy's on here already multiple times with, with comments. So Darlene's here. Celeste. Linda. Arnell. Kathy. Hey, Kathy. I'm so glad you made it. Sally, Stephanie, wow, we got all the regulars here and a few more besides that. So welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to have you all here tonight. Hi, everybody. You are in for a treat, for sure. So tonight, um, Roy is going to tell us more about digitizing. And 
I, I, you know, for me personally, I would probably stumble and fumble a little bit if I had to define that word myself. I would probably put it really simplistically and just say uh, it's putting um, ideas to life in stitches, wherever those kind of ideas come from. But I want to hear your definition. So go ahead and give me your definition. Because of my background in education, I guess you could say I treat embroidery more like an art form. So it's, it's like, it's a relief. If anybody uh -huh. knows, knows that term, art term, it's like the coin in your pocket. It has that depth and depth to it. So I achieve that by changing directions of stitch, stitch length, density, mixing satins with fills and running stitches and so on. If that makes any kind of sense to anybody. Yep. It sure does. Um, what about as far as like artwork? I showed that little picture of, of a, you know, uh, kind of a, a rough, rough grouping of how I envisioned those, those uh, pictures oh. of roses to, to come up into actual stitches. But do you use images all the time or, or do you sometimes draw right on screen without any kind of image to go by? Typically, 99% of the time you do use some type of artwork. Now, professionally wise in today's market sometimes like the artwork that you provided us i would have to typically redraw that to get it ready for digitizing and that's sure. just it's just a process we go through when we do that um back that in makes the, perfect that, sense perfect yeah, sense because sometimes you know <sighs> thread has uh has diameter and width to it even though it's very small but you can't get all that detail a lot of people want on thread so we have to like find that perfect balance right balance exactly. almost like you're like you're trying to decide what you can minimize and what you can maximize, what you have to delete in order to get it to show up. And, you know, it's form. the substrate as in the material you're sewing it on, the thickness of the thread, if it's a 40 or 60 weight, that the speed the machine's going to run, how many color changes, all of that. Yeah. All the things that we, many of us as stitching enthusiasts, just take for granted and we load that design in push the go button and we're not, we don't even think now, about a lot everybody of out there. I'm not trying to scare you. It's okay to play. Okay. <laughs> Trust me. I've made more mistakes than you can even count. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm, you know, maybe That's someday in a future show, we can talk about, you know, how to, how to actually get your feet wet in digitizing. But tonight we just kind of wanted to define it a little bit. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, software. And then um, we want to show some some things too that that really and truly, I believe anybody and everybody can make use of whether they ever think they're going to become a digitizer. They just want to be able to play. I consider software programs a playground for embroidery designs. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's a tool. And I mean, it really is a tool to make yours more efficient and things easier for you. Definitely. Definitely. So um, I don't, you know, let me, let me go ahead and just show just a, a, a few pictures from, um, from the Just Jackets collection, because you were the one that brought that to life. Like I said, for me, you were able to take what I gave you as, as ideas and really turn it into stitches. And Just Jackets is, is a special collection too, because it features not only embroidery designs, but embroidery designs with applique as a base, which is another whole, probably another, another whole, whole subject. But there you can see, you know, the very simple graphic that I sent and, you know, many more besides that with a bunch of scribbles and, and a bunch of ideas, but uh, seeing it come to life really, um, really was a joy for me to be able to go from, you know, uh, the ideas that I had and then actually seeing the samples that that you know of of designs and then being able to test them out and and create the the jacket so you know what i love about it too and we'll we'll show a little bit more of this a little bit later but i love the fact that because there are so many designs in this collection and you're going to touch on that a little later 
And because they come in so many different sizes and forms, it really is for much, much more than just jackets, right? There's Absol just absolutely so much yes. more you can do with it. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to touch on it a little bit later because I do get uh, I do get questions from people who have already got the collection. I know I've got some people here who already have it. And I've got some people here who have already been using it and stitching it too. That's so, great. Good. Yeah. So I'm sure they'll they'll get a kick out of seeing some of those things too. So I'd like to talk a little bit um, about some of the wonderful samples that you've done. <laughs> and you sent me lots and lots and lots and lots of pictures. We could have a six hour show on the pictures that you sent. <laughs> I've been in it a while. <laughs> so I picked a I picked a handful, but let's go ahead and I'll I'll bring up um the first one. And when I do that, um we'll see what uh what you know where where kind of the idea came from and and I'd love for you then to tell us uh what how would this all happen for you? Like what your background is, you know, I know what you're doing now and all of those, all of those bullet points that I had for what you have been trained in. I could see how that all blends together to allow you to be such a, a master at digitizing because you kind of are marrying all those different um, technology tools um, into from that you've, what you've learned, but let's go ahead and bring up, I'll bring up, um, one of the first uh, images that you you sent. Yeah, this to me. this is an old one. This is uh, I think I did this one in I think uh, ninety one, and okay. this is a great example of uh, you know someone starting off in life and not having any money. So this is what you do if you want to do good cheap Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that works. <laughs> that works. So I did a family <laughs> portrait. So I have my mother, my father, my brother, sister, myself, and my wife. There's you right there. I had to get you had to identify all of, all of them for for me. So mom and dad. Yep. Sister, mom and dad. brother, yeah. wife, and Roy. Yeah. And that's <laughs> you can correct. See my little pointer there. I don't have any. And, if, and if you see the one in green, that's uh, Kelly. Actually, works at Dime also as the tech support uh -huh. manager. Yeah. That it's all in the family, isn't it? Oh, we've been doing it together a long time. <laughs> now, does he do digitizing as well? He that's no, not really. He doesn't do digitizing. Okay. He knows he knows all the functions in and out of the softwares, and his his talent really is uh, with helping the customers. But his, you know, what he does off air, he's actually an actor. He does a lot of stage. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. I couldn't do what he does. And he can't do what I do. So <laughs> very interesting. Well, we already got a comment from Celeste. She said, before we had the three by five floppy machines, um, so the machines that use floppy disks, she was creating through the use of um, different types of stitches. And says it's what makes the water look like it's really running. Yeah, I get it, Celeste. So appreciative yeah. of your work. She is, Roy. That is really great. That is great. And, um, Celeste also likes the the collection. She likes how she can um, group and customize the different designs together. Absolutely, so, yeah. that's then you're you're already halfway there. Absolutely, that's one of the great, great, great things that you can do on on machines, certainly. But uh, I think once you show a little bit tonight, uh, how software m makes it so much easier. You know, uh, it, it really, really, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I think it's. You know, you're able to see on a much bigger screen. And I know Eileen and I have talked about this um, before, that it makes you prepared so that when you get to the machine, you are really ready to press that go button because you've already seen everything on, on the screen. So, and Mary says she's never digitized. It looks complicated. Well, you can tell us a little bit more, Roy, what complicated yeah, may or may not be. Um, kind of the the it depends if you try to do a portrait the first day you'll fail yeah but you need to build up to it i mean do small things and also the biggest thing i would suggest do something you love do something you, for yourself that you like it doesn't matter what it is yeah got to start somewhere right absolutely and, and then watch these shows what find these shows yeah. like this and to help you out 
and Celeste says digitizing is an art form. So, so rather than use the, you know, use the word complicated, I would say it's, it's, it's detailed and it's very, you know, there's a, there's a big world there when it comes to, to digitizing, but just like we're going to uh, play around a little bit tonight. Also, in, in and software. if you do it as an art form, do you don't worry exactly. what other people think. Yep. <laughs> you are absolutely, absolutely right. So I love this. I love this whole family picture, though, because it, you know, again, it shows a little bit because you and I got to talk a little bit even about your background that your father, um, the matriarch or the patriarch there in the middle next to the matriarch, yeah. um, had a lot of talent himself. So I think you probably had a, maybe a little jump start with some of those. Oh, yeah. Opinions. I used to watch him paint and do his thing as a kid. Well, you told me a funny story about his cartoons. Why don't you tell everybody? That oh, story? yeah. He, that uh, was a good one. he worked at General Dynamics and he did all he ran the stat camera because he was the only one old enough to remember how to do it. And uh, every day he draw a little cartoon. He called it dailies and he tape it to his front, his door of his office. And he only made fun of himself. But it became such a problem in general dynamics that they asked him to stop doing it because people were clogging up in the hallways in the morning in that one section of GD. Oh, <laughs> it was pretty my. funny. That is funny. Uh, I see we got a comment from Janice. She says, it's nice to put a face with the name because you have already um, been in contact with her and helped her when she was doing uh, some testing for Angela Wolf's uh, lace collection. So. Hi. <laughs> 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 that's pretty cool that is pretty cool all right what's the next one i have here let's see ah more keep it in the family right why don't you tell us yeah. a little bit about these well my youngest boy was in band and he was uh part of the trombone section so i wanted to do something special for the whole trombone so i made everybody their own customized patch to put on their letterman jackets or and their if they had a material like my son had a trombone case that was made out of material and we put it on his trombone case uh -huh. I, I didn't i didn't paste in a picture of that but you showed me that that was yeah. amazing it, it so, also cool. is a um kind of an idea that i wonder if anybody's already thinking uh on this how in the world do you put designs like that on a trombone case <laughs> you want to tell us a little how that worked out i i, found, I went to uh, Joanne Fabrics and found some glue, uh, but you could also get this uh, like patch stick. I forget what we sell. I'm sorry. It's something that will stick a patch yep, to a patch, garment. Yep, yep. I forget and just iron, iron it on. It's the same kind of stuff. We it's didn't have that at the time when I did this, but now we do, which I wish I had at the time. But it worked great, honestly. Shirley says, wow, that's great. A lot of work was done. Yeah, there's a lot of detail in there. Awesome. Nice thing was, is I set it up in such a way, you see where it says Bowman Garland? Mm -hmm. I set it to where I could do name drops with Pep. So the next kid's name just flew right in there. And anyway. uh, <laughs> Josie So says, uh, your son must be pretty strong. <laughs> Carry that. <laughs> Carry that instrument around. <laughs> he was pretty good at it. Yeah, it was pretty strong. <laughs> oh, my. I'm and just glad about, he's out of school now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a memory that a lot. That's the other great thing about embroidery and embroidery designs. They are memories that last. They're, you, Absolutely. You, you've like immortalized those images and those memories. So how about the letters? I didn't ask you about that when you showed me those um, earlier. Which Were letters? Those, the, the, is that, are those the actual varsity letters that they buy in... Uh, Put on, or did you create those as well? I went ahead and just got the the school crest and digitized it. Digitized okay. the whole thing, with the exception of the where it says Bowman Garland. I use automatic lettering, so because I knew there was, I think there was like ten trombones, and I wanted to make one for each of them. Uh huh. Gotcha. And uh, let's let's see what Linda has to say. She has not done digitizing she's old school using um internet and larger and free motion okay linda i'm not quite sure what you mean about internet except that i'm thinking you mean you just download the designs that you want and then you um enlarge them and maybe use free motion tell it's, us more if you it, do something it, a little different 
I think free motions where she actually, we talked about that one lady that I, did the eagle. So she's actually sewing it without any kind of yeah. computer help. And I have seen that over the years, I, especially in my early days in machine embroidery, when people would come in and I used to work in a shop where we sold the machines. And, you know, when it was new, people were like, what? You can do this? And I, I'll never forget, I had a lady came in and she told me she learned how to sew when she was five years old on a treadle machine in another country. And I was fascinated by it. She came back uh, not too long after that with a jean jacket of all things that she had on that she had done this incredibly detailed embroidery you would swear was done on an embroidery machine. And she with did those, it all. The people that do that. I, I got another story I didn't tell you before. You see where it says SGP on the on the jacket itself. That's called uh -huh. chenille. That's called chenille. I was sent down to a factory in I think 94, 95 to take a, to watch the ladies because they all did it by hand. Wow. wow. And they were so fast. It was stupid, incredible. The problem was, is they were getting too old because they were back there from the fifties and they were retiring or dying or whatever. And the company, nobody wanted to do it by hand anymore. Uh -huh. So we had to come up with the a way to do it via the machine back then. Yeah. But I sat with them for like two, three weeks learning how they did it to duplicate it on the computer. Wow. Wow. Well, that's what, yeah, that's really, that's, it's that's amazing. The best, that's the only way you can do it. Yeah. Learn that's... from the masters. Mm -hmm. Well, so tell us a little bit about that. I mean, we'll look at this <laughs> next picture and Linda says, yeah, she's, you were, you were absolutely correct on that. But um, so there was a time and a place where we couldn't imagine doing photos in, in stitches. And we've got an even better, even better image of this, but you um, tell us a little bit of how embroidery, you know, came into being from what it was when you were first working with it to what it is today. <laughs> Actually, when I first got hired by a company, when I first got into embroidery in the eighties, uh, I almost quit. <laughs> just because I was in cutting, cutting edge animation type stuff uh -huh. and they were using paper tape and I could not believe they were using paper tape. So, but instead of quitting, I took it as a challenge and I actually, uh, learned, I, I took the digitizing pretty well right off the bat. And, but the problem is what I learned was a huge board about the size of your wall with a 16 button cursor. And every time you digitized a stitch, a piece of paper tape came out. Uh huh. So every time, uh, either you got really good because if you made a mistake, you started over or you got real good at splicing paper tape. So that's what it used to be back in the day. Huh. So, and that was, I mean, all embroidery was done that way at one time, correct? Was, was done with a. a that is correct. It was a, a paper tape. tape. It was a larger, it, it was very large media. Then it came down to like a one inch media paper tape. And after, you know, like people like me got it onto computers at the time or started developing software because we didn't like making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that then that was going to be my next question. So that's the again the beauty of of playing around in software, whether you're digitizing or you're just you know having having some fun. And we're going to have some fun tonight with it. But it, it you you can't hurt it. You can't break no. it. You can't tear it. You can't rip it. It's you know it's all just uh, an image until you actually stitch it out. And even then, you don't really have a whole you're, lot. Yeah, you really don't know until it's done. Yeah, thread exactly. Back but, in the day, a game changer for us was, you know, we had a paper tape machine. So you load up the machine with this big roll of paper and it punch out, it punch out the design when you were digitizing. The first yeah. thing we developed back in the day was uh, to fool the digitizing system to think it was punching paper tape that fed into the computer. And that was, that was a game changer for us. Mm, wow. Wow. That's, so. that's crazy stuff, huh? Crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. Let me get you back up here together. So tell us a little bit more about that actual, um, 
uh, wonderful, wonderful design there. Let me. Oh. <laughs> Let's get I'm one. not sure how many people know that we did lace software a while back and <laughs> that was a pretty tough project or managing that project to where it came out to for production and uh, we had a at least I had a chicken and egg situation how do I do freestanding lace and that hasn't been done like this before so we had to come up with new functions and fills and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I decided to go ahead and use those function and digitizing. And like, this is a good example of what I did by using lace functions in digitizing. And I'm going to flip back to the original image just for a minute. So this, this is my mother. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I did one for mom. <laughs> and this is her back in the sixties. So she was very happy about it. And, there you go. Yeah, it's uh, so. I mean, we're gonna we're not gonna have any anywhere near the time to touch on all of the different software programs that Dime produces. But um, I'll have a lot of show links, and we'll definitely have a link uh, directly to the uh, we call it Dime, uh, lovingly known as uh, Dime. It's Designs in Machine Embroidery. So Dime is short for that. But you can go there and um, explore yourself and see what all of the all of the possibilities are for software. We're going to start with some simple ones tonight, but the lace maker software was a, uh, that was a, that was a big one because that just really, that was fun. Oh my. Uh, that's the first time in a while. I actually had fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was so it's, it is so unique and so special. And like, you know, when you're able to see what you can do with a, with a photograph and make it into a well, lace. I understand you, that you can't do that with the lace software. I took, I had lace and pap. I did this with pap just to be right. Right. They will. Then clear. they do combine together. So they do combine together. Yeah, so I use the definitely. functionality from the lace to do this. Just want to make sure people I'm not saying the wrong thing. to people. Yeah. We don't want to steer anybody into something that uh, Kelly's um, Kelly's given a comment here. That undo button is amazing. And that's true. Absolutely. <laughs> that, All day long. <laughs> undo. And uh, Gwen wants to know more about, um, chenille embroidery stitches so could you just tell us a little bit more about what that actually means i'll flip back to the jacket well that's uh, the chenille is where the stitches are up a little higher and actually the actual machines if i remember correctly they don't even have bobbins they actually weave it into the material itself when it sews it's like a fluffy texture almost. it's a fluff, like. fluffy but stiffer texture to mm -hmm. it typically they put that on a one or two ply piece of material. I don't know exactly what the material is. I'm, I'm not that kind of person that knows all that. Yeah. I'm more technical on the technical end. Uh, the way to do proper chenille when you're digitizing it by hand is in counterclockwise circles. So. Hmm. It, it, but it is a totally special, unique machine. There was, it, that, there was something that came out on the commercial side that was called a sew chenille. I forget. I think it was on a Toyota sewing machine that kind of yeah. sewed it and kind of faked it, but it wasn't real chenille. Yeah. It, it's interesting when you, if, if anyone here, and I'd, I'd love to hear in the chat, if you've ever been to um, a commercial embroidery show, which is totally, completely a world of difference from our home shows, because in our home shows, for the most part, we're seeing things that are um, kind of like, you know, buy it, stitch it, <laughs> buy it today, stitch it tomorrow type things. And in the commercial world, there's just all of the different pieces and parts that, that are, are done, you know, for, for that kind of setting. So it's a whole different, whole different ball game for sure. Correct. All right. Let's see what the next one was. All right. Well, this is a perfect example of taking some image and making your dreams come true and by you know stitching out something really really special and very very unique so tell this us a little bit about <laughs> these next three i've actually got three of them to show here but we'll start with this uh, is uh Dorothy. me not going crazy during covid <laughs> everybody's locked out at home and working you know the whole deal so it's been a while since i actually did some real digitizing so I, I set some challenges for myself and, uh, my father, uh, was a big movie fan 
and he told me uh, about the like the movie cards they used to give at the movies back in the day. So I decided to, I'll do something like that. So this is a front and a back of the gar of what I put together. And then so, mounted on that special frame. It's put on the special frame. Actually, that was the frame that Eileen had with her doors. So and, and that was a that was a special thing that Designs and Machine Embroidery offered like two last years ago. Year. La was it? Was it? It was two know. years ago. You know, it was two. It was two. It was, years two. Ago. was it okay? Yeah. Time flies when you're stuck inside, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so I did the. I said I got the artwork that I wanted for Dorothy, but on the other side of the thing, I actually pulled the a quote out of the book and some of the artworks out of some of the books and then i did judy garland signature for the oh. back and then i did my signature at the bottom so yeah. I, I it kept me from going crazy yeah it, there's a and just to see if i could still digitize also and is that also a combination of the you you use the short the short term um pep which is Perfect Embroidery Pro, which we'll, we'll talk about. Yes, you know, that's Perfect Embroidery Pro with lace. This is the same thing with using lace functions. And and everybody that's here tonight, you're going to see a little bit more how, how the Designs and Machine Embroidery software programs are available in modules or units. So you can, you can buy one and then add another one. And when this one and this one is combined, you can do more because this and this are added together and it's or, like your it's your tool shed. Yeah. And then you just put this put the tools you want to buy in your shed and you're good to go. So there's the there's, there's the, I mean, the detail in that it, again is is incredible. I'd love to hear in the chat if anybody has um has ever even seen anything like this. <laughs> Josie So said she loved, love, loved the doors. So I'm sure doors we've got a fun. few fans yeah, here. Eileen did a great job on the doors. They were they were so much fun. And it, what was really fun too was seeing what everybody what everybody <laughs> did with them. Absolutely. I love that yeah. myself. And Rhonda's actually Rhonda is a commercial embroiderer, my friend Rhonda. She says it's been a while she's since she's been to a commercial machine trade show. Well, Rhonda, you got to get yourself out there and go to one because you're going to probably see a uh, hundred new things that, <laughs> that you're going to want to start. I, trying I believe out. the uh, IIS is still going and printed sportswear. I think they just actually had their one in LA in January. The things oh, are starting to. Yeah. Chicago should be coming up and I think to Fort Worth soon, if not already done. Anyway, and, I'm and sorry. <laughs> they, well, that you know, it, it, there, there's been a lot of that where people really weren't sure, even until things got close to the date, whether they were going to be able to go through with it or do exactly you know, some virtual events and things like that. So, I'm saving a couple of your questions for a little bit later. So, um, don't fear if I miss it. You can always, um, you can always come back to it. Oh, and and uh, we got another friend here, um, Cindy, and Cindy is also a commercial embroiderer and. She actually um, has a chenille machine. So, hey, Cindy, I'll have to get you to come on the show one of these days. And you can tell <laughs> us a little bit about some of the things you do. So that is neat. That That's is cool. Neat. And then what's Linda got here? Linda says she's going to email me pictures of things from uh, classes for uh, the free motion embroidery that she's done. Oh, that'd so be I'd great. I'd love to see love that. Love to see that. Absolutely love to see that. And then Josie loved the... Uh, Hometown, hometown charm. That's right. How did I, how could I get mixed up on that? But the uh, doors was two years ago. And then last year was hometown charms. Correct. And this year, what are they calling it this year? This year it's uh, on the house. On the house. Yep. We're going to show some of those in just a couple minutes here. So let's take a look at this next one. That That's one's it, amazing man. too. There yeah, are... That one came out well. Yeah. I mean, you the way you could capture the expression is just unbelievable to me. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. And that goes along with the that my dancing, you know, mannequin guys. Your dancing it's, dummies. It's dancing <laughs> dummies. It's just a blending of lace. That's all I did there. <laughs> As in, you know, having the colors working from light to dark and dark to lights type of things when I yeah. did this. The shading there. Wow. Yeah. That's really something. Well, you, 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 you know, like I said, this was just a handful of um, just a few of the things that you've, 
that you sent me that I thought were so amazing. I want to take just a minute to, um, of course, um, thank everybody for being here. And um, thank you all who are here live. It's wonderful to have you live here and in the chat. And we've got some, some new people popping in. But I also want to say thank you so much for all of you that are watching what will be the replay. <laughs> so if you're watching the <laughs> replay right now, thank you so much. I really enjoy um, having you here. I do this uh, So Tell Me show the fourth Monday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I bring in an industry expert. Um, very often it's a sewing enthusiast just like you to tell us more about something that um, I know you're going to be interested in and you're going to want to do um, on your own as well. So you can always sign up at letsgosew.com and you'll be kept up to date about notices and uh, future shows. I send out an email every weekend to everyone on my list and let them know what's um, what's new and exciting and what is inspiring, what's going on. So let's see, what was next on my, on my list? Um, I know you sent me all those great pictures. And then I thought, you know, we could just touch a little bit on, you know, because you brought up the Perfect Embroidery Pro software. So I just thought I'd, you know, bring up, pop that up on the, on the screen for a minute so that everybody could see what that, what that looks like. Um, for, you know, again, you've given us an insight into items that you have digitized, you know, beautiful projects that you have digitized. And again, with using that definition, that means you're really starting from scratch and doing, um, you know, designs that are are from nothing to something, right? That's correct. I do some. I I find the artwork I want to use. I sometimes modify it or change it the way I want it. Bring it onto the screen and digitize onto the screen itself. And you do require to do real true digitizing a program of this type that is going to be um, what I call full featured embroidery software. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. I don't do, um, what do they call that? Auto digitizing. I'm not a big fan of it. We have that. I'm not a big fan of it, but we have a, uh, we also have a photo stitch. It works well, but I like to get, I like to have control the stitches. I don't want yeah. something doing it for me. I, I got to share you uh, with you some um, great, great comments on uh, what we've already looked at. Um, Jane says she would, she um, loved the ones we're showing. She loved the Tin Man and the Lion, all of them. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I got one. We got one here. We got a challenge for you from Terry. Have you know, I have, ha I have the scarecrow half done, but then I got busy. That's one of those. Kind of <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, Josie so says the shading is amazing and look like it could be a, a poster image for sure. And I actually got a comment from the peanut gallery at home from my dear hubby. He says the wizard of Oz is some of the best stuff he has ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> and he's seen a lot because I've been doing embroidery for a long time. And um, that's really, that's really saying something. So <laughs> I like, I like things like that. Actually in the lace, I, one of the things I put into the lace software, there's an example folder in that. And I did Frankenstein for everybody. <laughs> oh yeah. I didn't show that one. I'll have to oh. do it. I'll do a post and uh, I'll add, I'll, I'll add some additional things and we'll have a link to the replay in my, in my post that I will put on the let's go. So website. So okay. we'll do that for yeah. sure. All right. So let's see what, what did we, what did I have next here? Well, all right. So we're not getting into prices or anything here yeah, no. tonight. You know, you certainly, like I said, you could go explore at the designs and machine embroidery website, which is uh, uh, I'll put a, a show link in to direct you right to that, that site where you can explore all the different software programs that are available. But we wanted to take a peek into some of the ones that, you know, like free, <laughs> you can't get much better than that when it comes to budget price software. So I've been using and really enjoying Embroidery Toolshed for uh, quite some time now. And I've highly recommended it for people that, you know, either don't have software or at all and want something to get started or, they have other software programs that quite frankly are just a little bit too cumbersome for them. And they're not, 
able to do some of the simple things that that we want to do. So I know you're gonna you're gonna show a little bit about that. But I combined it on the screen with another program called Perfect Stitch Viewer that comes from uh, Designs and Machine Embroidery, and that's because this particular program is one of the least expensive programs you can get into and get started with. It's on sale this week, and I'll have a link for that as well, for $79.99, I believe. And we recently, uh, was it just last Thursday? It was this last Thursday, yeah, last Ashley. Thursday. Our friend, our, our mutual friend and your colleague, Ashley Jones, from uh, she's actually the lead educator for Designs and Machine Embroidery. She did a whole full circle <laughs> tutorial on Perfect Stitch Viewer on the last. Uh, she did a great job. I highly recommend watching it. Definitely. I'll have a link for that so you can go and watch that, that whole video. But you're going to show us at least a few little tricks and tips that someone could use and someone could uh, you know take advantage of with the free software combined with that very... Um, uh, low cost software. And then maybe you could just tell us just a just give us a little hint without you know getting into a full tutorial. What what would be uh, maybe three main things that somebody would do with the perfect stitch software, why they would even want it. Perfect the perfect stitch software? Perfect oh stitch perfect stitch viewer. viewer. Yeah. Okay. Oh well obviously the the viewing part for using like Ashley talks about is viewing the designs on your computer itself. That alone is worth its weight in gold, just organizing and all the rest. Since it's the first, I guess, tool in your tool shed, it adds on to embroidery tool shed. So you get all the same features tool shed has with perfect, perfect stitch viewer. So you have at the computer level, as in right there at the computer level, putting the software aside, you see the pictures. Right. Two, two, you can bring in the images, it's some light databasing. But the one nice thing that you and me were talking about is the embroidery tool shed, which is free. You can bring a design in, size it, save it in different formats, but you really can't break the design apart. Okay. You can merge designs mm -hmm. together, but you can't just, uh, hate to say it this way, steal little elements out of other designs and make a new design out of it. Right. With right. the perfect stitch viewer, it, it allows you to look right at the, uh, at the element level. And I know that doesn't mean any, a lot of sense to people, but I can show a little bit about yeah. that, what that means. Yeah. Why, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and, and um, we'll, we'll switch the screen and, and show it. But I, I think I just like everybody to know that the, the free software itself um, gives you lots of opportunities. I'm hoping to put together some tutorials myself on this because I use it a lot with the Just Jackets collection. You know, it's a free edition and you can um, do, do some different things so that you can create your own groupings of designs. I think you're going to give us a little taste of that too. But like I said, for free, change colors, print templates, um, even just to have something that you can play around with. And it's a, it's a direct download from uh, the website that I've got um, listed on the on the bottom there, and it just makes makes it a way for you to get kind of get started. But combined with the Perfect Stitch Viewer, which is a very low cost software, uh, gives you the chance to organize your designs, view your designs. I think there's probably lots of my friends here. I want to see. Tell me in the comments, have you ever searched for a design? for a very long time and then given up because you couldn't find it on your computer. <laughs> I know a lot of people, you know, we, we, uh, we kind of pile up those designs and they're hopefully they're organized, but uh, perfect stitch viewer really is a big, a big help with that. Right, Roy? Uh, I, yes. Well, we got one question here. Let's pop this one in um, before you get started. I don't believe so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's pretty um pretty common that you need to unzip yeah. your designs before you Correct. get before you get uh you actually know, one of the things since it's thing. at the computer level, a lot of people put their designs in the cloud. It has to be local. You know what I'm saying? If it's in the cloud if it's in the cloud, it doesn't generate the image where you can see it on the screen. That right, cloud. right. That makes perfect, perfect sense. Perfect sense. 
All right. Well, let's go ahead and I'm going to um, I'm going to bring up your full screen so that you can tell okay. us what you want to show us here. Let me get rid of that comment. What I have done is right now I'm just an embroidery tool shed and I just want to touch back on what I just said about loading a design itself and staying like grouped together. So if I go to file open, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the design, some of the designs that are in the, on the house. And did we even, did I show those free designs? I don't um, think I showed them. Let me, let me pop those up really quick and they can see those. So these are all the, uh, uh, I keep forgetting what they're calling this, 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 uh, on the house. No. On the house. So on the house is a free design from Designs and Machine Embroidery every single week throughout all of 2022. So there've been a bunch of them so far. I just pulled up a little tiny, uh, just a little tiny sampler of, of some of them. It includes uh, the design. And then there are other ones that actually have uh, project and project instructions. Uh, this one is the, the current one, the cute little cute little mama with the baby, baby kitty. So they're very uh, seasonal oriented too. And, and really Eileen's done a great job on uh, Deborah Jones worked on this too. I understand. That's correct. Um, the putting them together. Have done a wonderful job. Yeah. So that you can have something that, uh, you know, fits with whatever, whatever season, whatever holiday is, is going on. So I'd love to know uh, if anybody, if anybody has any of those, let me switch over to your big screen here. I see Janice says she's got the skating bird. She thinks it's so cute. It is so cute. And Josie is so behind. That's okay, Josie. You just can collect those designs. And, and then if you end up with the uh, perfect stitch viewer software, you'll be able to find <laughs> them all when it's time and you're, and you're ready. <laughs> I've only, I've only cherry picked a few of them out here to play with. So I, the first thing I, I'm just an embroidery tool shed. So I'm, okay. I'm going to bring up the, the free software. The free software you can download it, and this is what you're going to be getting. So if I click on the egg, you see how I highlighted the whole thing. Sure do. So it's all in a group, but you can't get inside here and do stuff with these individuals. Okay, but you can come in here and go copy, paste, and have two of them on here. Rotate it and even size it a little bit. I wouldn't go sizing too much with this kind of detail, but you get 20% out of it and do different things. That's okay? pretty much an, an average, isn't it, Roy? Like 20% up or 20% down if you're not- Typically, that's what you- a, a program that, that recalculates the stitches. That is, well, this does recalculate the stitches, but there's a lot of detail on this too. I understand, right? Yeah. That makes it, sense. It boils down to, you know, 10 pounds of coffee to five pound can because of the detail. If you got a really simple design and then enlarge it too big, it just doesn't look good, but it'll generate, but it just doesn't look good because <laughs> there's no detail. Right. Cause you're not using the, the, what we, what I would call the native software where it was created. When you use the native software, you have a little more flexibility, correct? A, a little bit more flexibility. Yes. Okay. But still. Yeah. And, and that's, that's another whole really good point that I think probably a lot of us, don't either think about or maybe don't even understand that um, embroidery designs are digitized for the actual size of the artwork to start with. And when you start changing that a lot, you're really talking about having to start over again, aren't you? That, uh, I, in some, I, you, you do have some flexibility, especially with stock designs. Like this would be something we do our best not just to let you size it a little bit, but there is a lot of deep. This would actually look better if you sized it up. A okay. You know what I'm saying? Type yeah. of deal. So let me bring it back uh, up and you can. But we also try. We also try to do our best to find a balance between different materials and substrates. You know what I'm saying? So we try to do the whole thing. If you're doing commercial, when you're doing commercial, they tell you what they're sewing it on. So that is specifically for that type of garment typically. Right. That's a really good point. Really good point. Okay. So here, this is what I'm getting into that this difference. So I should also say that if you just have embroidery tool shed, if you hit on these little 
triple dots. I have everything turned on on mine, but you can put it in demo mode. And you can oh, demo yeah. any one of these softwares. It's fully functional. Let's but talk about it that will for a uh, it will not let you save. Yeah, because when you when you download the tool shed, you you actually see all of the other programs that are available from the folks at Dime, correct? That is correct. And that, and like you said, you can actually demo or play with them, which is a little bit I can it to like going to the candy store and saying, can I taste that one before I buy a half a pound? You know, that's exactly it. I mean, yeah, you get to a, play with it, have a good time, but just understand you can't save if you don't, you didn't purchase it type of deal. And then so. if you did purchase it down the road, it's a simple matter of activating it. That's it. Yes. Yeah, and then you've got access to use that in combination with with You actually shed. took that new tool you bought and put it in your shed. Mm -hmm. You own that so tool just, now. You just f filled up your toolbox with a with a new tool, and then I you taught me something just the other day of if you wanted to just isolate one of those programs, and and you know only play around with the features in that particular program, that's where you were able to to do that little click click what I call a click trick. <laughs> click trick, yeah, that's what I'm doing tonight actually. So I'm gonna like turn off. I'm gonna go ahead and talk. I'm gonna add, put embroidery tool shed, which is the baseline, and then put the stitch viewer on. So this is as if you purchased the Stitch Viewer and registered it is what I'm about to do. Okay. So I'm going to turn all my stuff back on. And we got a lot of comments coming in on, on people that have done the um, the free designs or they are collecting them. And then Janice has a question related to what we just talked about. So are all modules to add on to Embroidery Tool Shed? Okay. So the other, other modules, to add. yeah, you have a whole list here. We've got uh, the Perfect Stitch Pro, Word Art and Stitch, um, my quilt embellisher, block piecer, my quilt planner, my fabric designs. These are neat, fun toys. And this is the, uh, what is it? My emoji stitch, <laughs> yeah. my pet emoji, and uh, the stitch snapshot plus there's uh, just a, a whole vintage lace patch the viewer and then you got your different fonts available now my suggestion if you're gonna if you really want to get into the the font part mm -hmm. just jump directly into word art and stitch you just it'll save you money in the long run because these five right here are part of that right and oh that's i'm another... sorry that's that's wrong i'm sorry well, these four vintage okay. is part of vintage i'm sorry and then there's there there yeah there's a whole program with with uh, the lettering and right. like I said there's a, there's so much that we could go for we for can hours go on, on it, for hours on this yeah. now it if will. it's a if it's a cost thing and you just want to just get into it you can get any one of these font packs at a reasonable price yeah so it looks that's... looks looks like we've got uh, Joy here's already already got her collection <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's awesome. pretty good that's pretty good but I do I love the fact that you can um you could try before you buy. And you can just see if it's something that's, uh, you know, going to be. And you can, uh, you can also part of the triple dots here. You can also pull down uh, the manuals and review the manuals. Oh, wow. Uh, what's the other thing you can do? If you hover over, you see how I hover over any of these? If you press mm -hmm. the F2 key, it'll send you to YouTube and give you a small video on each one of the functions. Oh, my. Yeah, I remember that. I have not uh, taken advantage of a lot of that myself. I tend to, you know, jump in and just do what I need to do. And Exactly. <laughs> and, but if you're just getting started, out. those little things help a lot. Yeah, actually. definitely. Definitely. All right. Well, show it. Give us some more tricks here. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and load the exact same design. Now, understand that I have the stitch viewer on. OK, see how I got the check mark. It's on here. And this is on. So when I go to my elements, notice it's not grouped. Mm -hmm. So I can click on individual pieces and take them out. Okay, so I'm going to do an undo. And let's just say for grins, I'm interested in this piece and this piece. Okay. Okay. So I, how I would do it is I would click on the piece and this would tell me what color it's in. And this little eyeball, I would turn it off, turn off the other colors. <laughs> Just get them out of my way. 
And again, this is because um, both the free tool shed and the um, this is just another cost, feature and viewer. Yes. Okay, and the low cost um, perfect stitch viewer are combined together. Correct. So I'm going to draw a box around this one and drag it over here. I don't want these, so I'm just going to highlight those and delete them. I'm going to see if I can just grab that by itself. I don't want to bring it over here. Oh, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the rest of that. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. And I am going to just for, I'm going to turn on these other colors. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete those two just for grins. Okay. And I'm going to move this over here. And the first thing I'm going to do, just because I'm going to go ahead and group this as one object together. The reason I'm doing that, because I, I always make this mistake. I'll start pulling stuff apart. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And you did the grouping just by literally clicking left right clicking with your mouse, right? I just and drew a box. Drag did, over it. And then I did uh, group and you got ungroup. Okay. okay. So that so, makes all those individual little segments of the design stay connected together, correct? That is correct. So I'm going to go just for, I'm going to go ahead and just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and you see, I got only four colors down here. Oh, I'm going to hit this plus key here. Okay. And it added another color. I'm going to click on that number five and I want a deeper red. Oh, so that brought up the whole menu of. Oh, well, let's go into that real fast. Right now right I'm off. using the exec, uh, exquisite thread 40, but you uh, got all I'm these in my background here. <laughs> but you got all these different ones here too, that you can choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. And with the right mouse button, I'm going to click on that red. And now I got two different colors here. That's oh, how you do wow. a color change. That was so easy. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go, I'm going to take this piece here. I'm going to go copy. I'm going to go, I'm going to bring up a new sheet. And okay. I'm going to hit paste. I'm and going to let me, idea. let me ask you a quick question while you do that, because you brought up a new, you, so you opened a new page, a new workspace, basically, right? right. If you look straight and, down here. And your other is, one's still there. Yep. So I think even that, you know, that I, I think a lot of people don't realize that you can do that. They think, you know, most of the time you open a program and you're kind of stuck there, but it's so nice to be able to do that because you can be working on one and then try something else on a different page and you haven't lost the work that you've already done before. And yeah, you don't have still, to save yes. it. It's still just there. It's just there, right, for myself. Now, let's go. I'm, that's a good That's a good question. You know, honestly, I just took this from that egg. Right. It could be argued that this is a new design. Yeah. Like a little clip art. I'll make my own little clip art. So I can, I'm going to click just on that piece of the design there. I'm going to go to file, save as. And I'm going to say only save what's selected. Okay. I'm just going to give it a, a name, zero, 01. Save. I click on, oh, well, I didn't. <laughs> you I, didn't I, do I, as you I, said. I almost <laughs> made that mistake. <laughs> How many in the chat? Tell me if you've made that mistake. If you played around <laughs> with software, I'll raise my hand first. I've done it. And make All sure right. you get your questions in here too. Save as. And I'm going to click on, so you see how it's already saved as its own file now? Mm-hmm. Zero, two. Very important to go. Section only if you're doing what I'm doing here, because I don't, I don't. Otherwise, it would save uh, both of these together. Like if I accidentally just, will, I highlight, go to file, save as, but I forgot to check this on and save the name. I go to file, open. You see, I'll put it together. Right. Just like right. So, so it's just, it's just a little kind of a neat little trick to take little parts of designs and save them in separate files. And what's so amazing, again, is you've taken just, um, I'm going to pull up uh, the, the image again or the software. You've taken the free software that everybody can download and it, it downloads like really fast. And you've combined it with um, a very, very inexpensive software, but one that has a lot of features. And again, I encourage you to watch Ashley's tutorial on it. You'll be, absolutely you'll be amazed, but You've combined just those two things and you were able to take 
something from you know these free designs and you could see there's lots of pieces and parts in some of these that you were able to pull out and save as and put together in a whole new way. I, I mean, you just maximized your embroidery designs in, in, in a few minutes time, which is really also really another thing that's kind of neat is, you know, this, this is just fun. You're playing, like making your own Legos, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah so you exactly. can sit there and put your little stuff together. Like, let's say I have this little thing right here that I brought it which I need to go ahead and do that again. And we got a good question here that relates. So I'm going to pop good. it up so I don't, don't lose it. I think we've pretty much answered that, but do you have to have the tool shed to use the perfect stitch viewer? So I'm going to say, yes. Yes. The, the you perfect... need to have tool shed to use anything and everything. So you start with the free tool shed and then everything else software wise works with it. And did I say that correctly? That is exactly it. Now, bef years ago, we had each one of the programs as separate programs. And that meant that you had to, as a customer user, would have to keep up with each one of your softwares when an update came out, mm -hmm. which was a headache and a lot yeah. of downloading, a lot of installing, and it was crazy. That and was they didn't an work point. together like a tool shed does. Right. So we moved to one install, and it updates all your softwares or your tools in your tool shed every time there's a new update. So no matter what you have, whether it's um, <clears throat> Toolshed or some of those other modules together, when Dime comes up with a an update and they add free things all the time. That, yeah, that, we do, actually. What I've seen. I mean, and yeah. improvements and things that would just make your life faster, easier, and more fun. <laughs> that um, I think that comes up even automatically when you open the program, doesn't it? Where it prompts you. Yeah. Yes, when I when I'm ready to release a new version, I do my magic and it will talk to your software and say, "Hey, you got a new install. Would you like to download and install it?" You could say yes or no. I would say yes because some of the some of the updates we do have minor updates like either bug fixes or updates to file formats, new file formats. Right. Uh, we did recently one with WordArt and Stitch was a huge huge update. For the people that had Word Art and Stitch before, and they got a bunch of free lettering in it. Yeah, and that, like I said, yeah. that I mean, that's the key word: free, free and updated. So yeah, once you... once you're part of the family, yep. you're in. You're in. You're good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. We don't charge you for updates. June says she could play for hours. So I, you know, I'd love to um, see in the chat from those of you that are that are here. Is there anybody here who literally has never touched an embroidery software program? Let let me know if you if you haven't. Um, I'd like, I'd really like to know, and then certainly tell us those of you that have played with some of this and maybe what some of your uh, favorite things are. I'd like, kind of like to see that as well. That's, I see an, an, somebody's got to go. What was the, there's one from, uh, O'Malley. A question, Janice, yeah. Janice, you got a scoot? Uh, okay. Go. Yeah. Let's get her question in real quick. If she's still here. Um, why something. digitizers seem in, seem to throw in jump stitches. The common sense says. They don't belong there. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a six million dollar question, isn't it? Okay, um, it's a good one though. Here's here's how another way of looking at digitizing. Okay, digitizing is an art form. Is how I look at it. You have your I treat the stitches, change the direction where the ambient light in the room reflects off the stitches to give you more three dimension. That's only half of it. The other half. It's a logic puzzle. So mm -hmm. if you like art and you like Sudoku, you're 50% there for digitizing. Mm -hmm. Somebody that is not, doesn't do the, the logic part will paint themselves into corners and I'll have to jump out of that corner to get to the next part of the design. So the so, technical term for that would be pathing as in pa walking exactly, down a pathing. path and getting where you want to go. And exactly. getting there in the instead of taking the path that takes you five miles around in circles. Exactly. It's more and in the commercial industry, that's the fastest way to piss off production is mm -hmm. jumping everywhere because you're adding time to the sell out. And right. time is money in the commercial. Time end. is money. So probably you're going to see more jump stitches at times in 
home sewing embroidery things, but, but well, done I'm, with somebody that's learning and that's exactly, okay. Exactly. It's all from, from experience. Right. We have so, some features in PEP that allow help you with that. So anyway, that's a different, that's Linda a different hasn't show. done digitized embroidery, but she's the one who's going to show, send me some, some pictures. So, and let's see what, uh, Tim already has PEP, but has never updated. Will you be in trouble? <laughs> you really should update. I mean, yeah. we, we add things, do things all the time. And you can update all at once, right? Just do it once and it does everything. Yeah. If you have PEP, then you've done PEP. If you have all our softwares or half our softwares, it does them all at once. Because it's all one program with inside your tool shed. I say just do it. Just do it and you'll be good. Um, let's see. Oh, she, um, Julianne likes your explanation, but she doesn't like Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much of a puzzle per. I'm not much of a jigsaw puzzle person even myself. Here's the, here's the other thing, me. though. If you're doing it for yourself, who cares? That's true. That's true. <laughs> There's another, <laughs> another not fan, but that's okay. As long as you like embroidery designs, that's all that counts, Juanita. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, th those, th you know, you just gave us a little taste there, but like I said, you could take um, any of those even free designs and with all right, those let me let me do something really programs. fast so i'm gonna i'm not just gonna size this but i'm gonna squash it i'm gonna use a key com or i'm gonna go copy paste you got a method to your madness here yeah let's rotate that to there let's get it a little closer in cd is new to embroidery and never use a software cd i hope uh we have convinced you to get your feet wet tonight I sure hope so. It'll be paste. So, and again, I'm doing this with embroidery tool shed and viewer. So I'm just playing around here. Okay. I kind of like that a little. I kind of like that. That looks nice. So let's, like let's highlight the whole thing. I'm going to go copy, paste, and mirror. And just drag okay. and drop. I don't yeah. like that very much. So I'm going to rotate the whole thing a little bit. Okay, I can live with that. Let's go back to my other one here that has this little red. I copy that. Let's go to this one. Let's paste that in. Let's go ahead and just lay that right in there a little bit. Let's rotate that. Okay, I, I can dig that. And these are all, like I said, easy things that anybody could do just with, um, with a few clicks. Yep, and let's put that over there. I don't really like that very much. Let's rotate that in a little bit. Okay. We need something to tie in right here. So extra. let's go stuff. open. What have we got here? Let me see what I can steal. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Okay. Let's take that tree. I want... That. We're seeing the mind of a mind of a digitizing master at work. Even if you're <laughs> not creating from scratch, you just you can't... You can't so, stop yourself once you get going here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to hide these bits and pieces. I'm going to steal that leaf. I'm going to block it. So you hid it. them. Let, let me ask you, Roy, are they still there? Or they are still They are still there. Aha, uh -huh. you just made them invisible so that you could see what you wanted to isolate. This is why I use this all the time to digitize. Once I'm done with the section, get it out of my way. Okay. So it, you haven't changed. You ha That's a really good, I think that's a really good tip for everybody because what that's showing is that you can not mess with the design. It's still intact, but you're just making that part invisible so it doesn't mess with what you're trying to visualize. Exactly. Okay. So I've grouped this leaf. I'm going to go ahead and copy the leaf. Uh, let's see. Where's that? Copy. Yeah, copy. Now, there's key commands, too, for the ones that will do key commands. Control-C, Control-V. That kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm not much for shortcuts. I usually take the long route, but once you get to know them, it's really a smart way to work things. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a bit here. I don't like the size of that, so I'm going to go ahead and bring that up a bit. So let's put that right there. Okay, I copy and paste. Let's rotate that. I'm going to poke at some questions while okay. um, pull up some that, that were from a while back while, um, while you're doing that. Let's see. Okay. So let's grab both of these real fast. Let's do a copy, paste, mirror, drag that there. 
So that, that kind of finishes it off a little bit. Yes, definitely. So one thing, anytime you do a design or do clip or like I just made a whole new design here, just yeah. stealing, literally just stealing picking, from other picking stuff. pieces and parts. One thing I always do is the, after I get all this done, I hit the minus key down here and it wipes out all the color in my palette, except for the ones that are in the design. Ah. Makes it clean. Then I highlight the whole design. You can either do that with drawing a box around it. You can go up to edit or I'm sorry. Is it, uh, uh, okay. You can't do it under that. Okay. You got it. Oh, there it is under edit, select all or control a. Okay. And the one, th this is just me being me. I always go right click center origin. So I want to make sure the zero zero is always in the place. Um, so that now, you know you have it uh, dead center in the hoop, right? Correct. Now this okay. in the home, just as a little tip for everybody out there, the home market always starts in the center of the design, but commercial machines do not. Okay. <laughs> they, that's the reason Good you to need know. to center your design. And and we should also, you know, just, just clue everybody into the fact that, that the software allows you to either open or save in pretty much all the major home formats. Um, oh, so you're so not going to be limited by what kind of machine you have. Yeah. I mean, you got all these, I mean, you got all these formats right here. We got a really good question here, Roy. Let me bring it up. Uh, Geraldine wanted to embroider the egg before you tore it apart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. On um, 140 pound uh, cardstock. So I don't know my numbers of cardstock as good as I probably That's a good, that's a good thick cardstock. Yeah. How would she reduce the bulk in the stitches so that they weren't, you know, too heavy, basically? Let's see if we can do that. Let me go. Okay, so let me go open. Where's that egg? There's that egg. And while you pull that up, I'm going to bring up one more just so we save a little bit of time here. Because Cindy wanted to know, where do you find the free designs? And Cindy, you find those right, um, right here. Uh, www.dzgns.com. You'll find everything there. And I will have a link for you in the show notes for that as well. So, okay. Going back to the question that you just had, that is something you cannot control in, uh, in the, the software we're talking about right now. You need, you need more heavy. You need a, you need a little more right? software. Cause if you, yeah. uh, here, here's a, I don't want to discourage anybody, but right now you can change the height and width here and you get info on what this is. But if you had, uh, I'm not saying you need to get digitizing, but I'm going to go ahead and just turn my digitizing on to give you an example, make default. Get I'm another highlight real fast. Just, and look at all the functionality you have now. Yeah. Over to the design itself. So you can change the densities, the stitch lengths. Like I could just come in here right now. With the full scale software program. With the full scale. Right. I, I got right. that kind of uh, flexibility. Yeah. Because you're. So you're, that's how you would get the, the card stock where you can loosen up those densities a little bit to where uh, it doesn't like chew up the paper. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I've got a little um, crazy trick that sometimes I do with things. If I want to put a design that is maybe a little bit heavier than it should be for the for the material or substrate I'm going to put it on, I increase the size without recalculating the stitches. Which you and can. You yeah. can get away with a, a little bit of that, but that's just kind of a, a crazy trick. So let's see. We got a few few more here that I think. That's oh, I actually wanna... not. That's not a bad idea. Actually, let me try that real fast. Go ahead. Let's uh, we got um, you'll read one uh, says she's fairly new and never used embroidery software. She gets overwhelmed and doesn't move forward. Well, like I said, I would encourage you. I think what Roy said earlier too, about being able to click on those and get a video and watch a video and then just repeat it. And the more you do in software, 
And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Roy, but the more you do when you don't, I mean, it's hard for somebody like you because you know everything. <laughs> it's hard to step back to that moment in time. Yeah, yeah it's nice. It's nice to be know. me, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's totally new. But I remember those days. I, I, I could remember it myself, what it was like. And you just, you have to, it's just like anything, you have to start somewhere. It's to take, you know, one small step <laughs> in software is one big step eventually in in um if and if, if software's later. if software is overwhelming my suggestion is to do exactly what we've been discussing tonight start with embroidery tool shed copy and paste in size right so out see what happens you just okay. play around a little if you want to do a little more like i just showing you how to steal elements that's going to the you know chapter two Okay. Learn chapter one first. It's free. It may not be for you. Yeah. But yeah. if you have all these functions in your face, it, it'll drive you nuts. Well, we have so much more at our fingertips today built into the machines that that does kind of, you, you maybe aren't even thinking about the fact that you're using software, but in a way you are. It's just built into the machine. So just take that next yeah, step with my good. encouragement yeah. and do it, you know, on the screen of your computer and and you'll really see that you're you're getting a lot further. So June's got a good question. Is there a way to eliminate the overlapping of stitches? With the pep, yes. Okay. Yep, cuz that's again we're getting into more digitized. That's more of a that's more of a advanced functionality. And Crystal, I didn't read your I'm going to read it now that you got it up here and got this idea it would be cool to have a format painter tool and embroidery digitizing software select an object Copy the settings, apply it to other objects you're okay. working with. Makes All right, sense. hold on. Yeah, I, got, I knew that magic would make wand. sense to you, even though it didn't quite catch with me. <laughs> Here, hold on a second. What she's asking for, and tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Uh, let me go ahead and put Pep back on. And then I got a question for you that I want to make sure we cover tonight before we, we wrap up in a few minutes here. Oh, I'm, doing the, I'm doing it wrong. There we go. I think I'm doing it right. Okay, I may have confused myself. Let me see here. Go ahead. Answer the question or ask the question. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you to show a little bit um, back to uh, Just Jacket. So you'll need, to, you'll need to be done with this when you do it. But I've had people ask me, you know, how do I get it from the download, whether it's a physical package download I sell on my website, you know, the actual card with the uh, download info, or if they download it directly from designs and machine embroidery, what happens to it then? So I think you, you, you're going to uh, just show us a little bit about that too. Okay. Well, I can't get back to my software or can't get into it right now without rebooting my software, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but to your question, what you're asking for is, I believe we have a function in digitize or PEP called uh, magic wand. So we're back to Crystal's question. Correct to answer okay. her question. There's a magic wand that you can click on the color and it digitizes the shape with only that color or that section. All right. If that's what you're asking, Cheryl, I mean, uh, Crystal, <laughs> Crystal, let us know. If not, then um, maybe we can get that one in in our, in our more detailed later on. <laughs> I got one from Vicki here. Um, she's been listening while she's finishing up digitizing, hmm. using text to make the center block for a charity quilt. Nice. It's loads of times, but something I like. Yeah. I, you know, in, if, if I could use a really loose term, I would say digitizing is anytime you're kind of creating and recreating and making it, making your own thing. I know that's not the real true technical term, but in, in reality, you're, you're, you know, you're making something new and different. So I think you could definitely, definitely say that. Do you use a book for reference on embroidery or just manuals? That's a really good question. It depends on the person. Some people do better with an actual book in front of them and like to sit there and make their crib notes and all that kind of stuff. There's PDFs and there's videos. Okay. So, I mean, it, it you kind of pick your poison. All right. And Crystal says, no, that wasn't it, but okay. All right, Crystal, next time we, next time we, we corral Roy here, we'll start with your question Sorry. and we'll clarify <laughs> until we get it, <laughs> until we get it right. So are you able to show us just a little bit about what happens when somebody downloads the Just Jackets collection? Yes. Uh, I have had people ask me that multiple times. 
Okay, so when you get the Just Jackets in there, you'll get the, the download. And once you download it, you will, uh, and it's coming up right now, you run the install from the download, and this is what you'll see. From here, you you got to check for updates, but you just downloaded, so that doesn't matter. Okay. You have instructions, and if you click on instructions, it will bring up the PDF for the instructions. And that was added to added to the design collection so that you could see exactly how to hoop your jean jacket using both a regular hoop or using the special dime sticky hoop. So you can be assured that you're going to know how to how to hoop up that jacket. When you hit in, when you hit install, it'll ask for a serial number. I've already got the serial number in already registered on my computer. But the nice thing with just jackets is if you do not have dimes uh, uh, applique software, which is patch and applique maker. Mm -hmm. Another module. That's another, another module. module. Let me get rid of this. Here, I'm sorry. Let me close that. The uh, If you don't have that, you just use this one right here. And what you do with that is you hit install. You can pick your formats that you want it in. And and I'll just add that you can go back and you can re-pick your format. So if you have more than one machine, you can go back there and you can pick it again and download another format. You can download all the formats you want, right, Roy? Absolutely, yes. So I'm going to click C2S. I'm going to click OK. And when it installs the software, it's, it's done. And it's going to open up the folder where it installed it, okay? As a default, it's going to always install it into Dime, Designs, Joanne Banco, and Just Jackets. So part of the install, you'll have your instructions, charms, little tiny designs, and then the applique designs themselves, okay? We went one right. step further with her collection and broke them down for you where you can create your own designs using hers. And that's another thing that a, a lot of people don't realize when they look just at the packaging, they don't see, you know, it says, uh, what, uh, I always forget how many there are, um, 34 appliques and 16 charms, 50 designs. Well, yeah, 50 designs that are already there, ready to go, but then all the parts that made all those designs are there too. So, 111 right there. Yeah. Big so, and small. Everything in between too. Now here's the fun part though. If you have Patch and Applique Maker, you can install it directly into the software and it'll work with the software's interface. So I'm going to do that right now. And I'm just checking some of the comments while you're... Putting so I'm going to bring this, I'm going to bring this up and I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. I'm just trying to show you. Well, like but, I said, I know a lot of people have it already too. And they've been asking me these questions. So okay. it's great so to have I'm the expert show how. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring up the patch. And part of the patch and applique, you have this right here, which is applique designs that come with it. All these designs come with it. But you notice that once we installed it, Joanne Benko, Just Jackets, and it, it's just right part of the software now. Yeah, so it's all there for you, ready to use. Ready to use. I love it. I love the way, um, and I'm sure you had the the major part in putting that together to <laughs> yeah. have all of that. <laughs> now, let's just say, just for grins, you just have just the just for jackets, okay? Mm-hmm. And you only have the free software, Embroidery tool shed plus just jackets. Okay. Okay. So you would not install this. You would install the first one we did. Okay. You go to file open and you would go to the, where would we go? Let's see here. You go to the folder, find the file that you want. In this case, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go. You know, and again, the beauty of software is that you can see all of it either in those little uh, thumbnails or in um, you know in in real size. And let's say since I've since we've already broken it up for you in its elements, I'm gonna oh, I like that rose. 
I'm going to bring that up. I like it too. <laughs> I'm going to, and I'm using the free software now. Copy, paste, rotate. A little more rotate. That needs a little more. Copy, paste. And you're rotating just with that little uh, circle that's the little circle on the right here. Corner. And you're just manually swirling that around. And I just made a little design for myself. Yeah. I love it. All that from this. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's all it's all in there. <laughs> it's all in there. It's well, just your you're just up to your imagination what you can create. Yep. Yeah. Well, you showed us just so many wonderful things, Roy. I really appreciate it. I want to get just a couple more um, questions in here before we wrap up. And I got something really exciting to tell you at the end, too. So stay tuned in just a few minutes. So um, Celeste wants to know, does it come in a Mac format? So I'll let you answer that, Roy. It That's will work. We have a translator, which you can find. And it's also part of the documentation that you install the translator. Once you install the translator, then you can install our software on the Mac. Right. And Juanita, uh, and I and I will testify to that. I use a Mac and I'm using all of my Dime software on my Mac and it runs absolutely flawlessly, flawlessly. Uh, Juanita wants to know, do you have a go-to reference? I think she, I'm, I'm assuming she means with regards to uh, digitizing per se. Let us know, Juanita, if we're not correct on that. I all he we is have the, are, reference. Yeah, I, the reference. I do is this. here. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's right <yeah>. up here. <laughs> I'm really, I'm sorry. I'm not the person to ask. I think we have some uh, lessons that are available out there. Uh, here's another thing to think about. Digitizing is digitizing. You know, throw all the softwares in a bucket, shake it up. We all generate stitches. Right. The big difference in ours, we work very hard to make it simple as we can. Two, the people that design the software are digitizers, not just code heads. <laughs> okay. And, <laughs> I, I think I know what you mean there. Yeah, just, you know, people that do numbers. Yeah. And I lost my third. Uh, and the updates are free. Those are the big three, I guess you could say. And uh, Vicky's using uh, the Perfect Embroidery Pro, which is the big daddy, the big daddy software, I call it. Awesome. Plus all of them, all inside um, uh, Embroidery Toolshed. Yep. So you could start with Toolshed and you can add with whatever else you wanted. And Juanita meant a reference book. Yes. Um, yes. The reference book is is up here, <laughs> is up here in Roy's head for sure. Um, let's see what do we got here. Uh, Virginia says she's never used a software program, but all this is interesting. Maybe a little confusing only because we've done so many different things all in a short little span of time. But again, I, I encourage. I do you. have a, ten a tendency of going fast. So I apologize. He has a lot of fun when he gets started clicking in that software because it's, uh, <laughs> it's so easy. But um, really just get started with a little bit and you will find that it, it gets easier as you go along for sure. And then Barb loves that the updates are free. I agree, Barb. That is fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and Cindy's got a good question. Where does it tell you the colors to use and the order to sew the design? If you go up to file and go and print preview. Bring you back here. You get a, uh, I'm sorry, let me do that again where everybody saw what I did. Yep. Go up to file, print preview. And you will get a, uh, basically the whole color sheet like this. But you can also set it up to do different options. Like I have it set to one page right now. If I click on OK, you can have it set to two pages. So this is the first page. And the second page is kind of neat. If you do a two page, it'll show you the color of what it's going to sew and then what color you, what thread to use. So the color breakdown in order, in order of stitching. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And Cindy, Cindy and I have actually conversed on this a little bit. I, I kind of, uh, I promised to uh, put together some PDF sheets for that that will eventually be added to the Dime website. So stay tuned, stay tuned for that. And let's see what else we've got. Oh, June says it was um, a great interview and enjoyed all of the 
information. We're glad you did, June. And Cindy's got a follow-up question. Is that only in to tool shed? Only in tool shed. The, the as far as the color sequence. Color sequence is in every soft tools. Anything that's in tool sheds and everything of our software. That's the baseline. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even this, this one here, I mean, I'm not sure if anybody would ever use it, but you even got design analysis. It'll tell you what threads to use statistics. Ooh, that's for it's the, gonna, geeky. It, that's it, for it, the it, geeky people. That's that for like the that. geeky. It's going to take <laughs> seven, seven and a half minutes to sew this. So that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and um, Juanita says it's a wonderful intro for folks like her who has not tried any of this yet. That's great, Juanita. We're really, really happy to hear. Highly you recommend that. it. Go, and go then play. Celeste says some digitizing software has a hundred steps to do one simple thing, not dime though. Yeah, I agree. And that's because you've got uh, Roy behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember doing the hundred, I remember the hundred steps. We try to combine some of those now. Yeah, well, we we appreciate the simplicity, and we really appreciate all of the all of the uh, you know the way that you've been able to break it down for us and show us really really simple how things are done. Uh, unless we have a few more questions, I think we're probably just about ready to to wrap it up. So, Roy, it's been it's been a joy having you, and. Don't be surprised if I ask you for another one of this. <laughs> I, hope <laughs> I, didn't confuse, I hope I didn't confuse too many people. <laughs> this was really a great way to get uh, get started and and see what what's available and what's out there, and then um, you know progress to the next next stage um, next time. So I got just a couple more got a couple more comments. Stephanie says thanks for chatting with us. You're welcome, Stephanie. Welcome everybody. Yep, something for the geeks. Yeah, well, I kind of like it's nice. To, it's <laughs> nice to get all those little extra, extra details. And then Barb has a question before I bring up the last screen here. There's a problem. That's a great question, Barb. Let's let's hear your answer, Roy. Is it a problem to load more than one software program on the computer? No, oh, I got all kinds of programs on my computer. I mean, it's just a you know you can't run our software twice because it's already in memory, but. You have multiple softwares. You should be okay. Well, and yeah, I think that's the other the beauty of the tool shed too is that everything is in one in one place for all the dime software. Now, if you have other software from other companies, that's going to be you know in a different. Typically, different the, typically the two softwares don't fight. I don't fight with anybody's software. If they, yeah, if, uh, you know, I'm live I've, live and learn. <laughs> I've had multiple programs on my computer, and they don't even seem to really take up all that much memory either. I don't know. Do you? Typically, no. Typically Usually no. it's the it's the support files that take up the most room. Okay. And Joanna has an interesting question. Can you, can you tell it to stitch one color of all the designs at one time? So I think what Joanna is asking is like color sorting. What you, I would call Pep, smart color Pep, sorting. So And Pep, it has that. Okay. You can highlight the whole design and just sort all the colors together. Now, I would be careful of that depending on how the design is digitized because you might run into some push and pull issues. That's yeah. the digitizer usually does that. The path pur is purposely is for a reason, pa a purposeful path. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because you don't want little holes and gaps. Great to hear that you, you enjoyed the information Arnell. That's wonderful. And June said your explanations were very understandable. So thank you. That's good to I hear from me. 100%. <laughs> So I got one more screen to show here. So let me bring this up because this is really, really something special from Dime. Let me get to it here. And you're, um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. I don't know when you're going to see anything like this again. But right now, Dime is actually offering a grand mega giveaway. And anybody can enter. Um, I have provided my uh, link to my website. Let me pull that up for you. And if you go right to the website, you'll see right on the front page a place where you can click and you can enter to win everything you see on that screen. So there's, uh, there's actually a copy of Just Jackets collection. There's also um, Vintage Clutch. My Block um, Piecer, which is a, a quilting embroidery software. We didn't even touch on on the quilting aspect, but Dime has a whole lot of software for that as well. The Blocked patch and applique, cool. word art and stitches, which you talked a lot about that, Roy, and all the great things 
packed into there. And Eileen Roach's new just earrings with thread and tools and stabilizer and materials to get you going. So I forget what the overall value of this was, but I know it was a huge number. It's like 3000 and some change. Yeah. yeah, it's quite a bit. It is truly, truly a mega giveaway. So please um, make sure that you uh, visit that and um, click and enter to win. All right. Well, I think we covered an awful lot tonight. And I think we got a lot of people excited about using software that they have already or trying software um, where they trying treading into the software where they have not gone before. <laughs> Yeah, if, they, new, if, if we get one person playing with software, then it's a success. All right. Well, this was a great success. Thank you very much, Roy. And I will say good night to all and wish everybody a week full of pretty stitches and happy sewing. Bye-bye.